We're, I'm ready whenever you are. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Marketing Live for Thursday, May 31st, 2018. I'm your host, Rob Zinke, and I serve as Associate Vice President for Marketing at Indiana University. And today on Marketing Live, we'll look at a social media first approach to marketing with a case study in leveraging influencers at Drake University. Before we hear from today's guest, a reminder that Marketing Live is part of the Higher Ed Live Network. Our episodes offer you direct access to the best and brightest minds in education. Be a part of our live broadcast today, so tweet your comments, your questions, and join in on the conversation using the Higher Ed Live hashtag on Twitter. Higher Ed Live is produced by M. Stoner, a digital-first marketing agency committed to tailored solutions that drive real results. M. Stoner and CASE, the Council for Advancement and Support of Education, are conducting a survey of how schools, colleges, and universities use various digital tools and techniques in alumni relations, communications, fundraising, and marketing. We invite you to participate. Results will help you benchmark your institution's digital advancement initiatives and track trends related to the use of digital tools in educational advancement. The survey should take about 20 minutes to complete. Respondents who complete the survey and provide their email address will receive a complimentary copy of the survey findings and will be entered to win access to M. Stoner's on-demand course, Digital Storytelling for Higher Education. And we are tweeting out a link to the survey right now. I am excited to welcome today's guest, Nikki Smith from Drake University, where she is Associate Director of Communications and Marketing. She is an alumna of Drake University and has worked in advancement there. Nikki leads all things social media at Drake, and she and the team there have done some award-winning work, which we will hear more about over the next 30 minutes. Nikki, great to meet you, and thanks so much for joining today. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to talk more and share what we do here at Drake. Well, great. You also direct the beautiful Bulldog Contest at Drake University, which I'm dying to hear more about. And you've got the T-shirt on. And uh, so tell us more. It sounds like a, a really fun gig. Yeah, it really is. And and I'll kind of explain a little bit how I've morphed into that role. Um, this was the 39th year for the contest. It's always during the Drake Relays. Um, the Drake Relays, of course, have been running for over 100 years. And we just crown um, a beautiful bulldog every year. We have them walk a pageant runway, and they wear costumes, and it gets AP coverage every year, international coverage every year. Um, it's been in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Japan Times. Um, so the reason I've kind of morphed into the role is that these beautiful bulldog owners are, the dogs have their own Twitter handles most of the times. I own a bulldog myself. He's old English bulldog. So he's a, he's a little bigger. He's not officially, he can't compete. <laughs> um, and he has a Twitter handle too. Um, old Oldie Dexter is his Twitter handle. But anyway, so there, there's this natural um, social media chatter about this event. So I was on the committee for it and um, the co-chairs kind of stepped down and that's how I kind of came into the role. And yeah, it's, it's such a fun way to kick off Drake Relays and everyone, it's growing every year and we love this event. You need to check out the Facebook page to get your bulldog fix for sure. Well, I watched one of the short videos and I was I was amazed. So it uh, it even exceeded my expectations. So I can only <laughs> imagine what it's like to to be running the show. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely in other duties as a signed role for <laughs> everyone here at Drake because we're all cleaning up, you know, dog treats and uh, we do it with great joy though. That is excellent. Well, one other question on your background before we get into the topic so that listeners have a chance to, to get to know you a little bit yeah. better. Is there anything from your professional journey that has stuck with you, uh, has impacted you, has had a lasting impact on your career, whether that's a specific experience or, or anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you asked that. When I, I, so I, I went and did my undergrad here at Drake and in Des Moines, Iowa, we are the first in the nation caucus. So every four years, it gets really crazy here uh, in Des Moines, Iowa with presidential candidates literally in our backyard. Um, we've hosted presidential debates on campus. So when I was an undergrad, I attended those debates and I worked at the Des Moines Register as a caucus clerk was the name of the position. Um, and I was the liaison, the nonpartisan liaison who wasn't doing any reporting that was the contact 
contact between the candidates and the register, just to help you know set up poor report on what the events are, just make sure all the reporters knew what was going on. Um, so I got to meet all of the candidates in 2008. Um, and now working at Drake, we host you know some debates. We're just the site um, for the debates. So. I, I'm always been involved in some way, you know, and and just loved those experiences. Yeah, and I'd love to have a um, off the air conversation about today's <laughs> political environment. Uh, I'm sure we could go on and on about that yeah. uh, and hear some of your experiences there. Well, the the topic today, and and want to leverage your expertise on the topic of leveraging influencers, and that's yeah. certainly a, a hot topic for colleges and universities now. And from your perspective, why is that? I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the on the social media landscape today and some of the things that have informed your strategies at Drake University. Yeah, yeah. So I, I recently published in the, um, a journal, and uh, in my research, I found a, a lot of people are seeing that social media is going both to video. Um, we have a lot of some people even say. 50% or more of content on Facebook might be video in a couple of years, and I believe that. Um, and that number has probably changed by now. But also influencer content. You know, social media, when it was created, was meant to enhance relationships. So it makes sense that people aren't really necessarily going to a website to learn more about a product. They're going to social media to see what their friends are saying about a product. So, you know, we have a very interesting product um you know it's easy i see friends shopping on instagram through hashtags like hashtag sunless tanner and then they pick out their favorite sunless tanner so we're a very interesting product right where it's not so black and white and um it's hard to be so heavy-handed uh if we want people to engage with our content so um i just see it it, our storytelling evolving um, on social media. And speaking of influencers, and, and we have uh, a wide variety of them here at Indiana University, and one of yours, a professional athlete, Zach Johnson, an alumnus of, of Drake and a pro golfer, and certainly has had some great success with two major championships. And when, when you have someone like that in your circle, how does your you and your team develop a strategy around leveraging a prominent influencer like that uh, in terms of listening, engaging, and, and making sure that you're maximizing opportunities for the university. Yeah, perfect, exactly. So um, we first look at the platform that they prefer to engage on. So Zach is very active on Twitter, for example. So um, if you know, we make sure to tag his account and, and celebrate him anytime he's doing well in a tournament. Um, that's easy content that our audience loves to celebrate a fellow bulldog. Um, on Instagram, for example, and I know we're going to talk about this later, uh, Drake the Rapper is more active on Instagram than he is on Twitter. He rarely tweets. And so we make sure to tag him on posts on Instagram and he follows us. So that's a huge, you know, reason he sees our content and sometimes engages with it. Um, so first we start with what platform are these influencers favoring and let's live in those platforms. And then we make sure to share that with other audiences. So of course, if, you know, Drake visits campus, we're going to share that in other places. Well, I have to go there then since you, since yeah. you brought it up. And when, when you name drop Drake, uh, <laughs> certainly have to follow follow up with that. And I know we, we wanted to get into that because you've had such a, a wonderful success story with the Bring Drake to Drake campaign during the 2016-17 academic year. So please give us a, a quick overview of, of what that was, what it entailed. And mm -hmm. and while I know many, many people and, and I'm sure several units across the campus were involved in this, how did you and your team specifically help the university to make the most of the opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. It all kind of, well, I'll take you way back. Um, <laughs> before he really blew up, um, he had a relationship with um, uh, a student here who works on the radio station here on campus had reached out to him and loved the name recognition and wanted to, and loved his music. And he had just finished with the Degrassi uh, TV show and wasn't quite as big as he is now. And, and he was planned set to come here and sit on this radio show. 
and then he blew up literally overnight and it just got too crazy and he he always wanted to come back so the students kind of started this bring drake to drake campaign and it's just always been this funny thing and on his birthday we'd tweet him and and people would love it and on canada day we would tweet him and we and the audience loved it and people his fans think we're a joke they they don't believe the university is real because they didn't know about it so bring drake to drake kind of changed that well anyway um he announced his tour dates in may 2000 um 16 and uh des moines was a stop and it was by far the smallest stop and we, you know the pr team we thought well that's not a coincidence he wants to, you know we want him to come here we're going to make this happen so that day a bunch of us worked on a tongue-in-cheek press release inviting him to campus and um then he started following us on instagram which to me was the tipping point because again whenever we tag him in content um or uh, mention him he sees that content since he's following us um which is different than his hundreds thousands millions fans um that press release got great coverage mtv people um and so over the summer we kind of kept playing with it a little bit and saying are you going to come are you going to come and um we did a really hilarious terribly photoshopped picture of him on our instagram using the app Drake Shake, um, which the students taught us about, where it takes any photo that you have, and if you shake your phone, it puts it photoshops a different picture of Drake on your picture. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun playing with that and, po and posting those images. And we tagged him, and he said, he commented on the Instagram post, I'm a pull up on you. So, I mean, we have this is the day before the concert. We have no idea. We were kind of in contact with his people but we had no idea if he was gonna show or not. And then the, the day of the concert, it people just started, students just kind of started hanging out around campus waiting and, and it became this really fun day and, and where everybody was physically waiting on the lawn of our, our marquee location, it's called Old Main, our marquee building, waiting for him to just drive by for, we didn't know what was gonna happen. But I, I remember looking around thinking there's no way he's going to come but this is such a fun day you know what day could we say we have such a huge chunk of our student body all together at once having fun okay then he had the concert and he wore the the event center had gifted him a letter jacket with drake university all over it fantastic and he posted photos of that and then he visited campus at 2 a.m when nobody was there and took a picture on our sign and the only caption on his Instagram post was our handle at Drake University. And it happened at 2 or 3 a.m. He posted it at 5 a.m. So PR team wakes up to this beautiful gift and we were getting 500 follow new followers every 15 minutes. Um, we had 8,000 followers before it all started and 17,000 by the end of the day. <laughs> it was really wow. fun. Yeah. And 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 it was the highest traffic to our website of all time. So, on Twitter, every time somebody was saying I'm that's it, I'm transferring, I'm going to Drake University as a joke, we'd always give them the apply link and the visit link. We were always making sure people were learning about Drake University in that time. Yeah, it was, it was so much fun. <laughs> And while I'm, I'm sure that there are elements of that that are a once in a lifetime sort of opportunity, at the same time, I'm sure there were takeaways that have informed your strategies and tactics going forward in terms of leveraging influencer content and, and shaping your strategies around influencer marketing. So could you share how your approach has evolved since that time and some of the takeaways that you have had from that and, and ways that you've benefited from that experience going forward? Yeah, absolutely. So um, influencer content in general, it, I, I always say, I always use the term, it doesn't need to be so heavy handed, your your content on social media, you know, it's easily digestible stuff. So um, I think I referenced um, in my journal, and I tell people this a lot, we have a very strong following on our Pinterest account, actually. And one of our boards is just cute pictures of bulldogs. And uh, it's, it has, you know, little to do with the, you know, academic programs that we offer here at Drake University, but it gets people engaging with our brand. And what do people post about on Instagram? 
and what do they engage with? You know, kids, pets, food, their feet, and celebrities. <laughs> so our, we're very lucky that Bulldogs are our mascot and there are ways that we can play with that and share that content. Um, we should celebrate our influencers like Zach Johnson. Um, we also, um, Michael Emerson, Emerson is a prominent Drake alumni. He was on the TV show Lost. And John August wrote the screenplay for Big Fish. Um, yeah, we, we, we make sure to celebrate them when they have accomplishments and remind our audience that they have this connection to Drake University. Um, we also have our student-led Instagram account on Painted Street. I don't know if we were going to mention that later or not, so I'll just bring it up now, um, that we started in 2015, where a different student takes over that account every week. And it's called On Painted Street because we have a painted street on campus that's part of a student tradition. Um, and it's separate from our main university account. A lot of universities do takeovers. Well, we have this account running in parallel constantly creating content for us. And it, we're very hands off. We give them the keys and we say go. And that's so that it's authentic. And, you know, we have a lot of large um, student population of Malaysian students who come here sight unseen their first day of school. And they know it snows and they know I'm gonna eat food at some point there. What does that look like? So this is a way to show them exactly what the Drake experience is through the you know eyes and the lens of a current student, not from you know the lens of of us as marketers. Yeah. So we we hope that that's an authentic look for them at the Drake experience, and we think that they're our influencers. With the Bring Drake to Drake campaign, Nikki, and you mentioned how fun and, and, and exciting of an experience that was, and and also connecting content to, to things that, that people are talking about uh, across social and, and being relevant. So how do you balance that? And I appreciate that you made this point in your journal article. How do you balance that with maintaining a certain voice on social media that maintains that connection to the university's overarching brand and is uh, consistent with the, the university's communications objectives that you want to meet. Yes, exactly. There's such a balance. Um, you know, we want to seem fun and approachable to the students, but we're not Arby's and we're not Southwest. You know, we are a university and I have our mission statement uh, up above, you know, in my cube that I'm constantly looking at and referencing when I'm sitting down composing tweets and composing replies. And that's my motivation, you know, we promote global citizenship and we want to provide a meaningful professional experience, professional and educational experience for our students here. So there there were a couple things for Bring Drake to Drake that made the cutting room floor, you know, that didn't make the cut um, that <laughs> that sometimes I share and sometimes I don't. Um, uh, that were that were funny, but we thought, no, we th this doesn't feel like the brand. This doesn't feel like Drake University. Um, you know, yeah, we just always wanted to make sure it was coming back to feeling like Drake. You know, we there are some lyrics to Drake the Rapper songs that you know are questionable, you know, and 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 aren't are not our brand. So. Um, sometimes we play with his lyrics like we and we did in the press release um, like YOLO and um, started from the bottom. We play with that a lot. Uh, yeah. So we're just making sure that Drake comes first, Drake University and students are learning about Drake University. Yeah. Well, not every institution obviously has a professional athlete or a celebrity alum or, or even shares a name with a famous artists such as Drake, but we all have everyday influencers all around us. So uh, I'm curious what recommendations you would have for colleagues on where or how to start if you don't immediately go to that that, that famous alum. Yeah, absolutely. So um, passionate alumni, whether they're famous or not, you know, there are alumni who are social, social media savvy, um, who love to brag about their alma mater. Uh, most people have homecomings, um, our homecoming of alumni, we have a homecoming football game still, yes, but our alumni come back to home um, during Drake Relays, so that's our big time, and anytime they're crazy celebrating about Drake Relays and Drake University, we know 
they're an influencer and they're somebody who speaks positively of the university. And I just kind of manually watch that and take note of their handle. And when we have campaigns, a lot of universities now have 24 hour giving campaigns and we have one as well. We'll reach out to them and say, um, you know, here's a sample post that you could put out um, to celebrate that it's all in day is what we call ours. When we have major announcements, like we have a, a, a lecture series where Tim Gunn has come and Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye um, will celebrate that announcement by sending that out to our alumni as well. Um, also, same thing with, with high school students. Um, I curate one or two incoming students for On Painted Street based on how they're you know, what content they're putting out about the university. If, if last year, last summer we had a student who was making videos and made a decision video, decision day video, and he had burned all of his decision day packets, his accepted packets, except Drake universities. And that's how he announced to his friends that he was coming to Drake. So we reached out to him and he took over on Painted Street um, that the first week of school. Um, and the other one that I've, I, I haven't, found the trick to tapping into is high school counselors. Um, I have one high school counselor in Chicago who's a Drake alum who is constantly tweeting about us. That's really nice. I have some Drake alumni who reach out to us for um, pennants and we sent, we always, I always try to get something in their hands. So they'll push their students and celebrate them. Um, that those are, and parents too. Uh, how can I forget about parents? <laughs> um, our most reach, um, our Facebook post that had the most reach this semester was just pushing out the president's list and the dean's list. And that's because parents were celebrating them. So I'm trying to push more social media content in our newsletter that goes to parents um, about twice a semester. So just trying to hack into the people who are celebrating Drake or, or your institution. Mm -hmm. Starting, starting close, close to home with those, uh, those audiences that are, that are closest to you. And uh, I'm sure it can get overwhelming though, as well, when you think of yeah. higher ed and, and all the audiences and constituencies that, that we serve. And so do you have a, a particular approach for trying to prioritize those audiences when it comes to identifying influencers or yeah. navigate, because I'm sure you could spend 24 hours a day sifting through that and trying to figure out how you want to approach it. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I, I kind of live campaign by campaign and objective and by objective. So um, right now our objective is orientation and making sure the students that come to orientation have a really fun experience and, uh, you know, pushes their experience into being a bulldog. Like you're a bulldog now, this is what it's like to be a bulldog. So that's my objective right now. Um, during Drake Relays, it's beautiful bulldog contest and all in campaign. So living in those objectives and trying to find those students and then, or whoever the audience is and giving them as much content as they need. So um, our Pinterest again, for example, we have a board on decorating your dorm and space saving options and stuff like that. So making sure they're getting that kind of content from us. So we're building that relationship with them and we're working on Snapchat filters for when they're on campus for orientation. Um, just kind of trying to pay attention to who meets our objective at that time. Yeah. Well, you mentioned earlier, Nikki, that you're you're not Southwest, and uh, you know your brand is obviously different. But at the same time, we all know there's value in looking outside of our sector. So, are there particular brands outside of higher ed that you pay attention to, or that you admire for how they're able to leverage influencers in meaningful and compelling ways? Yeah. So the brands I'm going to mention are <laughs> very mom focused, and because I'm a mom and women focused, so. Um, when I present at conferences, I always bring up, and I have to look it up because I get the wording wrong, FabFitFun. Um, they're subscription boxes for women, and they they their entire strategy is doing videos of, like, C-list celebrities who were on 7th Heaven, you know, <laughs> decades ago, unboxing these subscription boxes and saying, oh man, I love this lipstick. I tried this lipstick the other day. It's great. You you can use my coupon code to get, you know, 10 bucks off your next subscription. Um, so it's, it, they're very clearly taking these audiences that people love. And I see a lot of mom 
pages kind of surfacing as well, where they're they're sneaking it in, right? They're doing Pampers. Uh, potty training tips and it's very clear that Pampers reached out to them because there were an already existing um, personality on social media so so that's one um, I'm also involved in um, locally the Des Moines mom blog I'm a contributor once a month I just write a blog post but um, they McAllister's Deli, if you've heard of that, they're a national chain, just came to Des Moines and they had an influencers event and they invited us and we got to eat there for free. And we were we were just like, this is amazing, this is perfect for families. And we go back there every Sunday now after church because of that event. Um, I I just so they all all have an obvious product, right? And I've said said this earlier. Ours is more, is not as not as black and white, it's more gray. So just trying to it, for us, the translation is finding the stories on campus and finding the best ways to get it in the hands of the right audience that will appreciate that content. Well, I know there's so much that we could touch on and we, we didn't really get to pay to play or, or anything along those yeah. lines. But I, I would like to hear your thoughts on uh, you use the phrase a social media first approach to marketing and, and get a sense of exactly what that means. If you could summarize that and, and why you think colleges and universities should be be taking more of that social media first approach yeah so i'll i'll cut i say this is my journal and i'll say it again that we're not the pioneers and we're not the leading example so you know we're just the we're just kind of getting there and these are just slices of what i see happening but everybody kind of thinks of the website as your landing page and what if we turn that on our head and social media is the landing page because that's where when you wake up in the morning i you know when i'm feeding my son in the morning my baby i'm flipping through facebook so you know it's not it, it isn't in my mind to say i need to go to the alumni website and update my information every morning let's meet them where they are so everybody everybody in higher ed knows that and everybody's trying to do that but you know what if we were just taking it a step further and really trying to push more content on social media um and it's what to me what the balance is though is Social media content is easily digestible and the native content, whatever matches native content uh, performs better, but we still have brand integrity to it here. And that's where I'm trying, me and my team, we're all still trying to find the balance. Like we're not gonna completely put academic programs, on, list them on social media, right? But I, maybe someday that's what's gonna happen. I don't know. So it's figuring out how we can dip our toes in and still be successful. And one of the points that I appreciated when we talk about social media first and exactly what that is, is how you've talked about using social media simply to, to test content and to see what resonates before yeah. you look to other channels. And I think that's such a great and, and easy tip that that people can take advantage of, of what they can learn in real time by, by putting stuff out there and, and see how audiences engage or don't engage with. It. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. I think in the journal, I, I said we got some new buildings on campus and I did tours of them with our Snapchat account and alumni were replying and being like, whoa, that one room is really cool. We have a math room that's completely covered in whiteboards so that students can do long formulas. And alumni were like, I wish I would have had that. And I used that data, you know, to make a Facebook campaign to show alumni what they, you know, what they reacted to on Snapchat, we did great photo shoots of those spaces and then put it on Facebook for a different kind of campaign. So that was a way, even though Snapchat doesn't really have data, using the data on Snapchat to tell a different story somewhere else. Well, Nikki, this has been great. Kudos to you and your team for the outstanding work that you're doing at Drake. It's been a pleasure to learn more about it today. So thanks so much for sharing your time and expertise. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks again to Nikki Smith from Drake University. Thank you also to Jesse Arthur here at Indiana University for live tweeting during the broadcast. And as always, a big thank you to M Stoner, which produces Higher Ed Live and makes these episodes possible. I'm Rob Zinkin. Thanks so much for tuning in to Marketing Live on the Higher Ed Live Network. And join us next month in June for the next episode of Marketing Live here on the Higher Ed Live Network.